I'm a 30-year-old housewife named Jessica Bell. I recently relocated here. Though there is one annoying parent in the area, I have been progressively getting to know the other mothers. Jessica, are you dressing exclusively in brand names today? Tell me not to think you picked them only to impress me. That is untrue. I wear these clothing because I enjoy them without any specific purpose in mind. You want to flaunt your wealth, isn't that right? My younger sister, Cheryl, resides in the same neighborhood. My daughter and Cheryl's son are the same age. He attends the same kindergarten and goes by the name of Solomon. It appears that Cheryl does not think highly of me. She often makes snarky comments about me and appears to be telling the neighbors negative things about me. But it's odd that she's still reaching out to me. She is my twin sister, and our parents have always compared us to one another. We are probably fraternal, which explains why most people do not know we are twins. She has always felt competitive towards me, even though I was never really troubled by it when we were growing up. I made an effort to avoid being close, save from family events. But I was forced to relocate to her neighborhood owing to my husband's work transfer. She mentioned something about bringing her kid to visit that day. When you have guests, won't you at least offer a cup of tea? Wait a little while. I'll have it ready now. You have those well-known munchies ready too, correct? I have them ready because you asked me that yesterday. I'll take them out right now. This was how Cheryl was always, unreserved. Her attitude was apparent, especially on that particular day. Cheryl started nosing about the home after consuming a large amount of tea and cookies. Isn't this a new model of bag? Yes, I received it as a birthday gift from my spouse. What type of work does your spouse perform again, by the way? Yeah, he kind of manages a business. I evaded the subject regarding my husband's work in a roundabout way. Although the fact was that my spouse was not actually operating a firm, I deftly avoided bringing it up since I felt it would cause problems. You have a large income if he is managing a business. Would you please hand me that bag? Ha ha, that's not possible. That's a gift from my husband. He can buy you a new boss if he is one. Ha ha, I mean it wouldn't hurt to give me just one. Ha ha. Cheryl constantly desired other people's stuff like this when she came over. Though she never really brought anything back with her, it appeared that she asked other mothers in a similar manner as well. Her arrogant demeanor usually left me fatigued. Will you please quit now? Please don't go through stuff on your own. This is my house. Are we related, right? Lol, it ought to work out. Could I also open the closet over there? Ha ha. She usually gives up hunting after ten minutes or so, but that day she persisted for some reason. Abruptly, a loud noise from outside was heard. I walked outside to investigate since the sound was so loud. What shocked me was the sight in front of me. Our automobile was severely damaged, and Solomon was standing close to the vehicle with a metal bat. Solomon, did you break it with the bat? Ha ha. Cheryl appeared to be laughing. Solomon gave a slow nod. He succeeded. Ha ha. Whoa, what a mess. Ha ha. Hey, what's up with that smile? I had to inquire since I couldn't stand Cheryl's obvious happiness. I'm not beaming. I'm simply astonished, that's all. Lol. Ha ha. My spouse purchased this significant item for our family's benefit. So what was the price of this? It appears to be quite costly. I believe it was roughly $50,000. Whoa, truly. It can't be helped, though, because he's still a child, right? That is incorrect. It doesn't imply that he may do anything he wants without consequences just because he's a child, does it? Cheryl nodded without protest when I stated it. Our relationship is sisterly. Do you not think that you could talk a bit more politely? Do you intend to take money from me? What topic are you discussing? It's normal to accept responsibility for mistakes, even if we are sisters, right? I apologize, but you must accept full responsibility for this. Cheryl started to get irritated at these remarks. What ridiculous statement are you making? I do not intend to make any payments. Why are you getting so fired up over this when you seem so wealthy? 
Just relax a little, you have a plenty of money. What Cheryl said also enraged me. Even if the youngster was at fault, shouldn't you offer an apology first? Why are there no expressions of regret? Stop talking. It's absurd to become this upset about a kid's joke. Ha <laughs> ha. He. I was shocked by her unexpected remarks and felt stunned. Cheryl appeared to misinterpret, believing that I was fearful. I'll let your husband and our parents know as well. You know, I hadn't said it before, but when my spouse gets mad, it's very scary. Have you ever heard? He reminds me of a mafia member. You better quit making jokes about making me take responsibility if you don't want him to find out. Ha <laughs> ha. No matter what you say, you cannot avoid responsibility. Even if your husband is a frightening person, my position won't alter. Cheryl must have believed that by bringing up her husband's intimidating nature, I would be silenced. I wasn't afraid in the slightest, regardless of what Cheryl's husband could be like. Esti, what do you think my husband would say if you cause any trouble? He might come and make you suffer, but are you okay with that? By the way, which organization does your husband belong to? That's none of your business. As you have nothing to do with the mafia anyway, you should sort out the car issue yourselves. Why don't you ask your husband to buy a new one? So you really intend not to take responsibility? That's what I'm saying. Well, well, this is what you deserve, Cheryl said this while glancing at the damaged car. Something was apparently amusing to her because Cheryl started to laugh. What do you mean this is what I deserve? Because you flaunt your wealth, it's divine retribution. Besides, Solomon probably did it because he hates you, right? Isn't that right? Confronted by Cheryl, Solomon looked down. It seemed clear Solomon had done it, but something about his demeanor was off. So you're not going to apologize or pay for the repairs? It wasn't me who did it, so why should I? All right then, I'll contact the boss. Excuse me. Surprised by my unexpected words, Cheryl's eyes widened. Ignoring Cheryl, I made a phone call. After talking for about five minutes, I hung up. Who did you call? Like I said, the boss. I told him about the car, and he said he's coming over. When I relayed this, Cheryl suddenly burst out laughing. The boss is coming. That's a joke, right? There's no mafia in this area. Well, didn't you say your husband was in the mafia? Yes, but I've never met anyone else who is mafia. Lolol. At that moment, Cheryl snatched the metal bat from her son, giving me a creepy look. If you apologize now, I might forgive you. What do you say? Lolol. Huh? Why should I apologize to you? I'm sick of your flaunting wealth. Ever since you moved here, all anyone talks about is you. That's why I don't like rich women. It turned out Cheryl had been jealous of me all along. Her behavior up until now had likely stemmed from that envy. I'm not going to apologize. If anything, you should be the one apologizing. I really can't understand how you think you're in the right. Oh, really? Oh, well, then I'll just destroy this car even more. Alul. Right after saying that, Cheryl began smashing the car violently with the bat. No matter what I said, she wasn't listening at all. At that moment, a black car pulled up in front of the house. A large man stepped out of the vehicle. When Cheryl noticed him, her face froze in shock. Hey, what do you think you're doing to the car? I gave STI. You don't think I'm just going to let this slide, do you? Who is this guy? Cheryl, now pale, asked me. He's the boss. The boss and my husband. Did you forget? Were you too drunk at the wedding to remember? I calmly explained, and Cheryl looked as if she couldn't believe it. The boss? This has to be a joke, right? It's not a joke. I'm the boss, and I'm Esti's husband. Wait, wait a minute. You're telling me the boss is Esti's husband. I had no idea. I kept it quiet because I didn't want to scare everyone, but since your husband is also in the Mafia, I figured it was okay to mention it now. Well, oh, so your husband is in the Mafia, too. At that moment, Cheryl clearly averted her gaze from my husband. 
While this conversation continued, my brother-in-law returned home with his daughter. They had been out together earlier in the day, unaware of what had transpired. My brother-in-law looked around in confusion. When I explained the situation to him, he looked at the wrecked car with a disappointed expression. It was such a nice car that you received as a gift. I'm sorry. You don't need to worry about it. It's not you who should be apologizing, but this woman who needs to clean up her mess, my husband said sharply, glaring at Cheryl. This was just an accident. It's no one's fault. Just an accident. It was your child who did it, right? Parents are responsible for their children's actions. Don't you even understand that? I'm sorry. Make sure you take responsibility for what your child did. Ideally, I would want $200,000, the price of the car, but I'll settle for $150,000. Got it. Hearing the figure of $150,000, Cheryl's face turned pale instantly. She then began to plead with us. I'm sorry, I don't have that kind of money. You don't have it. It was your child who damaged the car, right? And you were hitting it too, weren't you? I'm truly sorry. If apologies were enough, we wouldn't need police. My husband continued, his gaze fixed sternly on Cheryl. Cheryl's expression grew so distressed it looked like she might cry. Isn't your husband in the Mafia too? What organization is he from? My husband's question was met with silence. Cheryl didn't respond. Why aren't you answering that? As Cheryl turned her face away, visibly frightened, my brother-in-law revealed a surprising truth. Your husband works at ABC Corporation, right? Yes, how do you know that? I was involved in a project with ABC Corporation for work recently. I was surprised to find out I was working on the same project as your husband and had no idea he lived next to my brother. The story we heard was completely different, wasn't it? I'm sorry, why did you say he was in the Mafia? I thought if I said he was in the Mafia, nobody would dare to contradict me. Are you kidding me? Are you making fools of us? No, that's not it at all. Unable to escape my husband's questioning, tears welled up in Cheryl's eyes. Being cornered by a stern, imposing man would intimidate anyone. Then my husband handed his smartphone to Cheryl and commanded, Call your husband right now. Tell him to come here. I don't think it's necessary to call him. You said you can't pay the $150,000. Call him now. I can't tell him about this. No more excuses. So you're going to prepare the $150,000. Then I can't do that. Then he has to pay, doesn't he? Hurry up and call Cheryl. Looking like she was about to cry, she stubbornly refused to make the call. At that moment, I decided to step in. I'll make the call. Do you know his number? Yes, we exchanged numbers just in case. Good, then please make the call. Then I called Cheryl's husband. Luckily, he answered right away. What did he say? He said he's on his way here now. However, he's far away on business, so it will take at least three hours to arrive. Can't be helped. Let's wait until her husband comes back. So we decided to wait inside the house for Cheryl's husband to arrive. During the wait, Cheryl was constantly frightened, glancing at my husband's face. After three hours, Cheryl's husband finally arrived. It was the first time we had met since the wedding, but he seemed calm and far from what one would call a bad person. I'm truly sorry for the trouble my wife and son have caused. I sincerely apologize. It's unfortunate that our reunion is under these circumstances, and I deeply regret it. Upon entering the house, Cheryl's husband apologized. It seemed he was a decent person. You too should apologize as well, he instructed Cheryl and her son to apologize. At that moment, Solomon, who had been quiet, suddenly started to cry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for damaging the car. Solomon repeatedly apologized, tears streaming down his face. Seeing this, my heart was heavy. Then Solomon began to reveal something astonishing. Mom said she would kick me out of the house if I didn't hit the car. I really didn't want to damage it. 
My teacher even says it's not good to destroy other people's things. I'm really sorry. After finishing, Solomon broke down crying. Cheryl, standing beside him, turned pale and panicked. Hey, is that true? Cheryl's husband could not contain his anger and confronted her. I'm sorry. Threatening Solomon to do such a thing is insane. What are you thinking, making a child go through this? I couldn't help it. Seeing Jessica living such a luxurious life, I just couldn't stand it. For such a foolish reason you made your child do this, if you earned more and allowed us to live a luxurious life like Jessica, none of this would have happened. It's all because of your low income. Cheryl was lashing out at her husband. Cheryl's husband just sighed without saying anything. What are you saying? It's my fault. Anyone would say your way of thinking is wrong. You're not doing these things behind my back to others, are you? Of course not. Hearing this, Solomon wiped his tears and began to speak the truth. Mom always talks bad about my friend's moms. She tried to take things quietly, and even when I told her that stealing is wrong, she told me to shut up and took various things. She also told me not to be friends with certain kids because she didn't like them or to take things that were important to them, which was really tough, and then my friends would call me a thief, and it made me really sad. Wait a minute. I told you to keep that a secret from Dad. I bought you snacks because you promised to keep it a secret. Why did you tell? Cheryl scolded Solomon. You said I could leave Solomon's matters to you, so I trusted you and focused on my work, and you still made him this sad, and you call yourself a mother. I've been taking care of things at home for Solomon's sake. Solomon knows that right. Yes, but there were times when Mom got really angry when I didn't listen to her and she wouldn't let me eat. I was so hungry and it was really tough. Don't talk nonsense. Just as Cheryl was about to strike Solomon, my husband grabbed her hand. You're the one being unreasonable. Just because you can overpower him doesn't mean you should impose your whims on him. Teaching him wrong will only turn him into a misguided adult. Don't you understand that as a mother? Cheryl, faced with my husband's stern rebuke, could not muster a reply and fell silent. Her previously assertive demeanor disappeared, replaced by sudden quietness. That's when Cheryl's husband began to speak. I'm honestly shocked to see this side of you. I can no longer believe anything you say. There's no need to go that far. I will take care of Solomon by myself from now on. I can't trust you with him anymore. Please don't involve yourself with Solomon going forward. It's impossible for me not to be involved. I want a divorce. Please leave the house. Cheryl was visibly shocked by the sudden declaration of divorce. You can't just decide to divorce all of a sudden. You can't possibly raise Solomon by yourself. I can't trust you anymore. Moreover, I can't let Solomon continue to suffer because of you. Are you saying you want to take his mother away from him? That's too cruel. You aren't acting like a mother to Solomon. It looks like you're just using him for your own convenience. That's not true, and this isn't the place to discuss such things. Cheryl, while looking around and blushing, glanced at us. I don't want Solomon to become someone like you. Your presence only seems to negatively influence him. Am I really such a bad person? Why do you have to say such things to me? You seem to have lost the ability to discern right from wrong. I'm appalled, and you've been neglecting your family all this time, acting all high and mighty. Now who do you think you are? I was foolish to have ever believed your words. I should have never accepted a job away from home. I should have stayed by Solomon's side. Cheryl yelled passionately. I won't allow a divorce. It's persistent. Let's talk about the divorce again when we get home. Discussing it here will only trouble everyone else. Her husband replied calmly. Cheryl still seemed dissatisfied and wore a displeased expression. After a moment of silence, my husband quietly resumed the conversation, returning to the original topic. You will be responsible for all the repair costs of the car, right? I can't possibly pay such a large amount, and we haven't settled the matter of the divorce yet. I've said this multiple times, but you have to take responsibility. 
It might have been the child who did it, but you made him do it. You can't blame the child anymore. You need to clean up your own mess without making excuses and dragging others into this. My husband said sternly to Cheryl, Yes, but $150,000 is simply beyond what I can afford. I'm a housewife with no income. I can't prepare such an amount. Could you please consider reducing it just a bit more? Cheryl pleaded meekly with my husband. However, my husband coldly responded, No, I've already cut down the amount significantly. By asking for $150,000, I can't reduce it any further. Hearing this, Cheryl looked desperately at her own husband. It was Solomon who did it. Can you please cover half the cost? Why should I pay half? We're getting a divorce, so it's no longer my concern. I know we're divorcing, but this isn't just about the divorce. It's about Solomon and our family. You can't just say it's none of your concern. Cheryl, on the verge of tears, clung to her husband, but he refused to nod in agreement. It was you who made him do it, so it's not my problem. Plus, I'll need money for Solomon's upbringing going forward. I'm just an ordinary man with a modest salary. You know I can't afford such a large amount. You caused this, so you need to take responsibility yourself. Seeing that even her husband had turned coldly away from her, Cheryl faced another blow when Solomon also spoke up against her. Mom, you're being scolded because you did something wrong, right? Dad didn't do anything bad, so I don't think it's right for him to apologize or pay money. You're saying that too, Solomon? You don't love Mom anymore, do you? I don't love you anymore. I hate it when you're always angry. I want to be with Dad from now on. I don't want to be with you. Solomon said this and turned away, sitting down on the sofa. Cheryl seemed shocked by her son's rejection. Then she turned to me with a pleading look. Say yes, I apologize for everything I've done to you. I was wrong. I truly regret what happened with the car, so could you please consider waiving the repair costs? If things continue this way, even my parents might abandon me. I really don't have any money. I'm sorry, but I can't make the repair costs zero. As I spoke clearly, Cheryl's eyes began to well up with tears even more. Why would you say that? Aren't we like sisters? We've been getting along all this time. You could help me out a little, couldn't you? Getting along? That's hard to ignore. You've been spreading rumors about me to the other moms, dumping trash at my house, and weren't you the one who left a dead animal at my doorstep? Where's the getting along in all of that? I regret doing those things. I already told you that the car was a gift from my husband to me and our family. How can anyone forgive having such a gift destroyed? I couldn't forgive Cheryl and dismissed her with these words. Hearing this, my husband offered her a suggestion. In that case, why not work at a factory to earn the money? I have a connection there. They were looking for workers, and I think you could start working right away if I call them. What kind of job is it at the factory? It's not dangerous, is it? It's not dangerous. It's certainly better than working on a fishing boat. It does require some physical strength, though. I might find it difficult to do physical work. Cheryl hesitated, showing reluctance to take on a physically demanding job. Not the time to be picky about jobs, is it? If you keep complaining, I might just raise it back to $200,000, my husband warned Cheryl, leaving her speechless. With that, Cheryl and her family returned home to discuss their future. After much discussion, the divorce was finalized and Cheryl was employed at a factory run by an acquaintance of my husband where she would live and work. I got an update on Cheryl from my husband. Your sister is struggling quite a bit since she has little work experience, but the place is full of tough-looking guys like me, so she doesn't talk back at all and just keeps working quietly. It must be tough working surrounded by people who look like you, I joked. Tough. Maybe we look intimidating, but we're all good-hearted, he laughed. Really? That's funny to hear from you, but earning $150,000 seems like it will take a long time. Cheryl might even quit the job halfway through. No need to worry about that. 
If she quits, I've made it clear we'll follow her until she pays off the debt. And what if she tries to run away? Well, then we'll have to track her down, take out insurance, and put her on a boat, won't we? He joked with a laugh. Scary, I laughed along. Cheryl even went to her parents, who had given up on her to beg if they might help with a little portion of the cost. In the end, her parents chose to break their relationship with her and refused to pay her a single dime. It appears that even though they had a great affection for their daughter when she was younger, they had had enough of her recent actions. They certainly wouldn't want to deal with a selfish daughter who would hurt her own kid. In addition, friends and family learned about the incident and began to steer clear of Cheryl. Solomon's grandparents later came in to live with him, providing some more family support for his home. Cheryl's ex-husband's parents are now involved. Cheryl's ex-husband chose to ask Solomon's parents for assistance because he thought parenting Solomon by himself would be challenging. Claire's mom. Greetings, Solomon. Isn't it great to have such lovely weather today? Yeah, I've been anticipating this day, Solomon said, grinning broadly. Solomon's family has been spending more time together since Cheryl departed, and they had made a vow to visit the theme park with the new automobile my husband had purchased. I typically ride in the rear and am driven by my subordinates, so it feels weird to see you behind the wheel. I've got to keep you all entertained when I'm with relatives, I'm a little awkward about it. You take care of our daughters every day, so today you can lean on me. My spouse is a fierce mafia figure, yet at home he's kind and kind. My spouse and Solomon have became close friends. Solomon, are you sad just having Dad? Happy, in addition to Dad, I also have Grandpa and Grandma. You're correct. Claire and I are also present. Claire enjoys playing with Solomon a lot. Me too, when Solomon answered, he flushed. My daughter and Solomon grin more these days than they did earlier. My daughter enjoys playing with Solomon a lot as well. In this town, I wish to continue creating joyful experiences.